Hi, this is Russell Brandjord, uh, the author of Spike Diet and Spike Diet X. I, uh, I'm just doing this video to, to share with you a, a really amazing study that I, uh, I saw today. It's from 2013 uh, from uh, Dr. Angelo Tremblay and a, a few others. Uh, in the review, it's uh, adaptive uh, thermogenesis can make a difference in the ability of obese individuals to lose body weight. And I uh, highlight a few key points in this in this study uh, it's it's really close I mean it's really close to what I've been saying all along and how I lost that weight uh, almost 15 years ago now and you know my first books I talk about starvation mode because that's all there was I mean adaptive thermogenesis wasn't really a, a term back then it, it's just really being studied now and notice now and and they're getting closer to be on the right path because when they first start talking about um, adaptive thermogenesis and, and you know from the leptin hormone they talk about body weight you lose weight this is what happens there's a, a body weight set point which is not the case um, and this study really talks about energy balance and homeostasis and calories in and calories out and that's the energy balance that your body wants to have it's uh, uh, acutely responsive which means it's responsive quickly fast it doesn't take time it doesn't take months or years or, or you no know, you don't have to lose 50 pounds for this to happen it happens from day-to-day -day energy balance and you know i've talked with studies in the in the past where after seven days of caloric deficits the leptin hormone begins to drop and that's kind of the first phase of adaptive thermogenesis and that first phase isn't going to really affect you too much but it's the start of things to happen uh, so this study um this one and i'll, I'll post a, a link to it below too but it's, uh, you know, some things I highlighted, you know, it's the important importance of adaptive thermogenesis for weight-reduced obese individuals, which may in fact be more important than initially perceived. So this paper is saying that, and this is a, a, a review study, so it's, it's, it's reviewing a bunch of studies that were, that were done on adaptive thermogenesis and, and obesity. And so they're saying that even it's even worse than they thought to begin with. Um, you know that and they, they say adaptive thermogenesis has been defined as a change in energy expenditure following acute and or long-term overfeeding and underfeeding which is key because the spike diet what i do is acute underfeeding and overfeeding the same week and what the studies have shown is that um, when you underfeed for several days in a row then leptin starts to drop and and it begins this adaptive thermogenesis and it gets worse and worse over time. But when I have a spike day, I overfeed. I have a surplus of calories. And I believe that's how I was able to lose weight finally and keep it off for good. I didn't hit this adaptive thermogenesis in a negative route. I mean, I'm going down and up, but I'm not going down consistently. I'm Because uh, it does talk about in this study how it does get worse over time. Well, it's um, for me, it was just one week. Always one week. One week, you know, six days dieting, one day going crazy and so the, which is awesome i can't wait there's a study done doing this six days in one day because they will see amazing results so i mean this one shows that that the you know the average adaptation is between 250 calories a day to 800 calories per day of energy expenditure going down which is a, a lot this is not just uh you know, overall calories burned, this is also just resting metabolism, which for most of us, if you're not dieting, it should be about three-fourths of what we burn in a day should come from resting metabolism, which is our, our basic metabolic rate. But if it slows that much, that's like a between a 30 to 50 percent decrease, decrease in that, which is the equivalent to another meal or working out for two hours at the gym. Each That's every day. Um, and this one says, on the other end of the spectrum, an increase of 760 calories per day has been shown to occur in, after three days of overfeeding in subjects. So I don't do three, well I do kind of do now, but when I lost weight I just did one day. Um, but you know, that it can be as high as 760 calories burning more than normal after three days of overfeeding. Um, just shows the, the power of, of this and, and how I think this is happening. Uh, is it's hormone driven and I believe there's the two hormones that make this all happen to begin with are, are uh, glucagon 
and insulin. They're like, they're yin and yang. They both come from our pancreas, but they cannot coexist. Insulin is an anabolic hormone that stores energy, and glucagon is a catabolic hormone that uh, burns energy, uses energy. And when insulin's in our system, our body cannot release glucagon to go and get fat from our energy from our fat cells or from our, our glycogen. And so I believe that, you know, we have a day when we're uh, more catabolic. We have more glucagon than insulin. It's, it's a catabolic day. That's a deficit and you're gonna lose weight, but that's uh, like a, a switch. So the switch is on to catabolic. And then if that switch stays on catabolic every day, after several days, then so on and so forth and further and I mean, longer on a diet, that's when leptin drops and this ad ad adaptation starts to take place. It's a switch. And then we have on my spike day, I have more insulin, I have more, I'm anabolic for that one day, that switch goes back to, to normal, back to, you know, it goes, to, it goes to anabolic, just goes to like where it should be baseline. And then back to a dieting for six days and back up. But it never keeps going down. It doesn't doesn't continually get worse and worse. Uh, so it just shows how how responsive our body is to energy balance. Uh, that uh, and this one says what you no know, adaptive thermogenesis. Why is it occurring? Adaptive thermogenesis may may represent a defense mechanism that is said to protect energy stores from accelerated growth or depletion. So that's what I do talk about in my book. This, the starvation mode. It's a it's a survival mechanism that our body kicks into. One, it does two things are happening and does talk about that. Those two things in this paper too. The first thing is uh, energy expenditure goes down when we're dieting. So it's, it slows down metabolism, so we burn less calories. The second thing, which is just as bad, maybe even worse, is that it increases our food cravings. It, it, in this paper, it says the, the drive for food increases. Uh, in fact, it says that, um, that that right here, that the, this, despite a decrease in total energy expenditure in a weight reduced in a weight reduced state, there is a increase in the drive to eat, an effect that is also observed early into energy de uh, deprivation. So observe early. So they're they're saying that it doesn't like take a long time for this to kick in. It, it kicks in quickly. They don't state the dates in here. They don't have days on here, but I bet you it runs to like the seven days like with like leptin. Leptin's dropping. That's when the cravings go up. I mean, I felt it. And again, what I know, what I know, well, I read these studies, but it started with the experience. I, I didn't read these studies and say, oh, I need to do this and I'll finally lose, finally lose weight. I had a, I gave in one day because I had heard a voice saying give in when I was having a horrible food cravings and four week plateau. And when I gave in, I lost weight. So I learned after the fact. And what I know is from my experience. So that's a, uh, really the the main points of this article but it's just cool that it's just proving what i've always said is true and i would love to uh connect with these uh these researchers and share my story with them and uh, some of my other theories because i have a lot of other theories too uh, but i'm going this right now 15 years ago today it was when i weighed over 300 pounds 15 years ago t today um i've given up i thought i had I did my last diet i'm, I'm not Gonna lose weight i was just born to be fat and that's who i am and i had to deal with it because i, I was too frustrated to try anymore um it changed in the summer but 15 years ago today is when i just given up it's pretty amazing what's happened since then and these studies show it and, and on top of that too when it comes to dieting i don't like dieting i like the lifestyle change obviously but i don't want to fight over what diet is better because every diet out there works whether you do paleo, keto, low carb, low fat, if you restrict your calories, you're gonna lose weight. But they also have this thing in common too, where your body's gonna adapt. So whether, whether, whether it doesn't matter what diet you do, I recommend having your spike day once a week, no matter what diet you're doing, um, because it's not about how much weight you can lose and how fast you can lose it is about how, how you can lose this weight and keep it off forever so the day one of your new diet or lifestyle uh, should be the same as day 10,000 it has to be a new lifestyle change or you're going to gain the weight back that's a fact i'm russell brandard and i hope you had a great day thanks